Black voters unwavering support of President Biden is starting to wear thin. This after pulling back on promises he made to black America during the campaign. As part of President Biden's new infrastructure bill, funding for historically black colleges and universities are now on the chopping block. Before taking office, President Biden vowed to end racial disparities in areas that have kept black Americans at a disadvantage. One of his proposals was increasing funding for HBCUs. The Biden administration is looking to cut funding for HBCUs by nearly $30 mil billion dollars with a B. We're also highlighting the positive experience of attending an HBCU. Joining me now to talk about that experience is Inga Willis. She's a Howard University grad and she's also the founder of the Mogul Group. Hey, welcome to BNC Live. So Inga, tell us about Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Tell us about your experience at Howard. I don't even know where to start. Um, <laughs> it was home. It was life changing for me. My uh, educational experience had been at private institutions where I was one of four or five black students. Uh, so it was a change of an ecosystem and the beginning of my molding into uh, servant leadership and uh, service to all mankind. All right, so was it the homecomings where you were like, okay, I am home, this is it. <laughs> Actually, for me, it was the college tour. It was as a high school senior, having the opportunity to tour the campus. Um, you don't experience homecoming until you're an alum in a very real way. So it was just getting to see it and it felt like home and I knew it called me. Yeah. I think that's what HBCUs do. Your, the one that's for you calls your name when you get there. And Inga, I don't know if uh, perhaps maybe you went to school with our Anthony Amy. He's also a Howard alum as well, our sports guy. You know. He's always We have a strong communications department. Uh, I was in that department, so I love seeing all of the journalistic and communications bison uh, in your space. All right. Well, I was just told he went to Hampton, so I got that all wrong. All right. So back to your interview. How did your uh, time at Howard inspire you to fight for social justice? Uh, one of the rites of passage at Howard is protest. And you learn, so in my protest class, Chadwick Bozeman was there, um, and we were fighting for the preservation of the College of Fine Arts. But you learn how to negotiate with the administration and make change from within a system. Uh, so I think that that's the undergirding for the social justice heartbeat through HBCUs, but specifically at Howard for me. And being right in the nation's capital, can you talk about how that also played a part as well? Unbelievable. Just seeing the motorcade go by, being that close during my tenure, the Million Man March occurred, just knowing that politics is at your doorstep, but also the opportunities um, that come with it, the internships, the opportunities to work on the Hill. A lot of people say that HBCUs are not diverse. They couldn't be farther from the truth. The students were from all over the diaspora, um, and I think that's evidenced in the fruit that we bear worldwide and to the White House now. Inga, when you hear that the administration, after promising to do everything they could to improve HBCUs across the country, is now talking about stripping funding, how does that make you feel, especially knowing the VP is an HBCU alum? Well, I think that politics is not an easy wield. Um, I think that we are all aware of the ebb and flow uh, between our current two-party system. I say let's uh, see what the outcomes are. I think that we can get bogged down in the right nows while things are still in conversation. I think that HBCUs have more eligible funding outside of the infrastructure package. And I think that the magnetism that we are now experiencing as an ecosystem is a call for all uh, alumni, corporations and beyond to make ongoing contributions and sustainable impact in the ecosystem. I yeah. think we depend on more than the White House. Most certainly. Uh, all right, Inga, for anyone talking down about HBCUs, tell them how they help prepare you for uh, the career that you're in right now. I, I think that the evidence is clear. I, I think that for Howard, I'm a Howard woman. We are everywhere. Uh, wherever you are, we're like Visa. We're wherever you want to be. Uh, <laughs> the network is unparalleled. Moving to New York, going after my dream, starting my first company, always the first to assist, employ, and edify me has been someone from Howard University or the HBCU ecosystem. It's one of the first things I look for in a resume. And so the network and the culture, it's important to the student 
What does your educational experience feel like as a black woman or a young black man in a space? And that is something to consider, especially in the climate that we live in now. I have been prepared abundantly and I'm forever grateful. I'm a fourth generation HBCU graduate and I hope to continue that legacy forever. I love that, love that passion. Inga, thank you for joining us and more importantly, thank you for sharing thank your you. HBCU experience.